Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss uh, further into uh, polar coordinates, and now look at example 10, which looks at graphing this curve r equals sine of uh, 8 theta over pi. And uh, graphing it, we're going to use that same Desmos calculator I used in my last video, so make sure to watch that one. So let's just jump right in into this example. And uh, here's the example. It says graph the curve r equals sine 8 theta over pi. And here I've already have the solution here. Here's a link to the Desmos calculator. Yeah, before I get to it, basically here is the shape that you end up getting right here. So this is the curve right there, the r equals sine 8 theta over pi. So just type that in. Yeah, you just type that in, you get this crazy uh, shape like this, yeah, this circular spiral flower looking shape, it's pretty amazing. So I also want to make a note, like always uh, with uh, the Desmos calcula calculator, you can graph the same polar curve. Um, we can basically graph the same curve by converting the polar curve to parametric equations. Again, as I've covered in my earlier videos, where this is just r. And yes, as you can see, this is r, r cosine t, this is r sine t, and basically you have r cosine t, r sine t, and this corresponds to the x and y coordinates. And that's how you would type it with this comma there in this bracket around to be able to graph that in the Desmos calculator. But with parametric equations, you can't use theta, you have to use uh, t, so t is basically the same thing as theta in this case, just, just because of the uh, Desmos calculator. So here's the shape, let's make this a bit bigger. And uh, yeah, so you have something like that. Let's just click this and play around with it. Yeah, so it's just loading the Desmos calculator, which is pretty amazing. You could uh, share exactly where you left off by clicking over here, the top, share graph, etc. And it creates, generates a new URL. This Desmos calculator is quite amazing. So here's what I have on the left side. Here is uh, the polar curve, I'm going to hide these and I'll talk about what they are in a bit. So there's a, there it is and here is uh, r equals sine, the r equals sine 8 theta over pi. If you hide it, it goes away. And now what you could do is, uh, what I've done is uh, put the uh, parametric form over here. So if you hide this, plug this, that's a, that, that works and there it is. There's our x and there's our y. And what you could also do is, again, look at the uh, the domain of t here, or theta. So if you put pi, you get that. If you put 2, you get something like this. 3, 4, and as you see, it keeps going. 5, if you go to 9, it goes like that. 9 looks like the 10, but if you add another 0, you have that extra extra one just pop up. So 10 is, in fact, the, uh, yeah, the range before it starts repeating. If you put another 0 right here, Notice nothing changes, so it, it just ends up repeating itself over and over again. And also, what's cool, so if you change it to if that's T, and again, like I've showed before, if you type in a different letter like A, and then you can make this from 0 to 10 pi for A, and I'll click this, this graphs a single point over there, which is quite amazing. And then you could, uh, you could press play, and it actually goes around and moves it. So that is quite amazing there. As you can see, it's looping around. You can change the speed, and you can uh, you make it faster. You can make it slower. You could also click this and change the uh, domain of that. So let's just press play. I'll pause. And here's some other cool stuff. Let's say you wanted to put A on here. Actually, not another. No, that's the point. A on the curve right here. Oops, A. So you type A times, so notice the shape gets really big because that's going to be multiplying by this. Now if you type this, and notice the curve changes as well, and that circle uh, just goes around the original one. Notice the flip around, quite amazing. Let's speed this whole process up. <laughs> Let's see how it looks like. As you can see, yeah, this is some amazing, amazing stuff. I'm just going to pause this and remove this. So yeah, Desmos calculator is absolutely amazing. It's the best graphing calculator I've ever seen. Just slow this down. Okay, so that's what we have. And there's from 0 to 10 pi. Let's just go back here. 
So yeah, now uh, to determine basically analytically the domain of theta, as you sh as you uh, saw earlier, I just went and just pl plugged in different values, ended up getting that it's from zero to ten pi. But to do this by hand without that calculator, we can ask the question: How many complete rotations are required until the curve starts to repeat itself? And uh, so basically, recall that one rotation is just two pi or 360 degrees, because never a polar curve works, you have theta like that. This is actually like this. This is a polar axis. This is distance r. And basically, a full rotation is 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. So if the answer is n rotations, so this is just a simplified version if it actually just takes n, uh, per, n exact rotations for it to complete its curve like this. Uh, Etc. So a number of those kind of rotations. So this is just a quick, simple one. If that is the case, so highlight that. Yeah. Then we must have. Yeah. We must have sine of. Uh, now we plug in the formula where the formula is eight uh, theta over pi. So eight over pi over five. And then we're gonna have to let's fix that up but then we're gonna have to add this here so we're gonna add a number of rotations n of those so 2 n pi yeah because one rotation is 2 pi so with theta plus n uh, n rotations like that and then we put this bracket over top like this and then this has to equal back to the same formula which is going to be just 8 theta over uh, five. So basically, uh, what we're trying to find out is if it has n rotations, and then you just rotate about those, then it just all it does is start looping back around, um, yeah, around the uh, same curve. So if we simplify this part, we get sine of. Now we just multiply this inside, so we eight theta over five plus eight times two is sixteen. So sixteen over five n pi like that. And this just equals to, oh well, yeah, sine 8 theta over uh, 5 like that. So now that we have this, now what I'm going to do is recall how a sine curve looks like. So recall that for sine. I'm just going to draw a big one across. I'm only going to look for positive values. I'll operate this as x and this y. And we're going to graph sine. Like I'm just going to graph it smaller, actually. Like this, etc., and you can go backwards as well. Same thing. And I'm gonna say this is our sine x curve. So y equals sine x. So recall for the y equals sine x curve, it starts repeating from here. This is the zero point. It goes to here. This is two pi. Then, as you can see, it repeats every two pi. It's exactly the same curve, and it starts repeating there. This is four pi. This is six pi, like that. Yeah, so this means that sine of x right here is equal to as if you were to shift this whole thing by 2 pi on there. And I'll just write this as equaling to sine x uh, plus 2 pi. Yeah, actually, just for uh, for technical purposes, this uh, if we were to shift it to the right, we actually do a minus because... Yeah, this would mean that if x equals to 2 pi, then you're back off to 2 pi minus 2 pi is, is 0. And uh, so to get a plus would actually go over here, shift this over to negative 2 pi, and this is going backwards. Because if it's positive, you need to, the starting position is going to be at negative 2 pi. Negative 2 pi plus 2 pi equals to 0 etc. So I'll just put a plus or minus right here. Yeah, indicating that uh, you can go left or right like that. Doesn't matter as long as it's 2 pi, then it's back to the same one. And it's also same for sine x plus or minus 4 pi, etc. You could do on and on. So this means that this equals to sine x. I'm going to do plus or minus 2. I'm going to call this m pi. Where uh, where m is equal to yeah m equals to yeah m is just an integer it could be zero one two three etc and uh, if it's for example if it's zero then it's just going to be sine of uh, x right here because that just goes zero if it's one it'll be it'll be two pi if it's two two times two it's going to be four pi like that. And what I'll do right here is I'll write, yeah, I'll just move this over, sine x, circle 
this like that. Yeah, so notice what this means. So this means that, yeah, this means that uh, 2m, so if you put this 2m equals going to be, well, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is going to be, well, 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have 6, etc. It keeps going on. The, this is even. So these are even numbers. So now if we flash back to our uh, curve, so for sine of uh, 8 theta over 5 plus, so let's just scroll back up. Yeah, this one's going to be yeah plus 16 n pi over 5. 16 over 5 n pi. This So this equals 2. Yeah, equals to sine 8 uh, theta over 5. This is when this becomes even. So because this could be considered our uh, like equivalent to x. Then basically we're adding this part here. And instead of m we have n. So then we just look at this part right here. Instead of 2m we look at 16n over 5. It needs to be even. So 16n over 5 uh, first becomes, so we have to look at the first time it becomes, it first becomes uh, even. If you look at it, 16 over 5 doesn't divide evenly. And it first becomes even at n equals to 5. So that it, those just cancels out 16 times 5 divided by 5. It just becomes 16. And you can verify this by going to a, just a calculator here. Here's the Google calculator. So 16 times 1 over 5 is 3.2. It's not uh, even whole number. So we go 2. Uh, let's see what this is. 6.4. And uh, yeah, 3 is going to be 9.6. You can do this by hand or just type it out like this. See, 12.8 and then the 5, they just cancel. So we have 16. So that's an even whole number there. Yeah, so that is our n. So thus we have, yeah, so thus we have sine of 8 theta over 5 plus 16 pi equals to sine 8 theta over pi. And then again, recall what n is. That's just the number of rotations over here. So that's how n we got it over there. So thus what we have is the same thing as writing sine of uh, 8 over 5 theta. This is going to be plus 2 uh, times by 5 pi, like that. In, in other words, we have five rotations, and each one is going to be, um, yeah, each one is 2 pi. Five rotations of 2 pi radians, like that. And we only dealt with the positive side there, so thus we have, and we in the initial angle is just 0, so thus the domain is theta is less than or equal to 10 pi, and then it's greater than or equal to 0, like that. Because remember, the 10 pi is just 5 times uh, 2 pi uh, radians for run rotation. It's just equals to 10 pi like that. And then if you go beyond it to the negative side or positive side, all we're going to do is loop around it. You can even go, yeah, you can go over here and look at the negative side here. I'll do this in negative 10 pi, and I'll write this as uh, 0. So yeah, it still works fine. If you change this to 5, yeah, so notice how it changes. So yeah, you can just do that like that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you learned from this pretty extensive uh, example, especially showing the domain of it analytically. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed and also uh, how you could develop some amazing curves like this. And if you uh, find any curves, uh, comment below and... Um, yeah, share what you have. It's quite amazing. Anyways, it's all for today. Like always, get download these exact notes in the link below as well as view it on Steemit as I will be posting it there shortly after I upload. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.